hand over to Stephen. It's his webinar. Stephen, take us to Tobago. Thank you very much, Sarah. Good afternoon, good evening, uh, good morning, and welcome to um, our Destination Tobago webinar. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Dwayne Kenny, my guest from Stand Up Paddleboard and uh, and Stand Up Paddleboard and what's the snorkeling. other one? And, no, snorkeling. and snorkeling. I should really remember that. I do snorkel in Tobago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, based in Tobago in what I call paradise. And uh, Dwayne is going to give you a nice little insight into uh, some of the fantastic water sports activities and adventure experiences that you can have in Tobago. Um, the third segment of the presentation um, is going to be about some of the little secrets that uh, Tobago has to offer that a lot of people don't know about. We never usually talk about some of these things in, in, in on our presentations. It's more the general things. So yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a surprise. Um, some of the, and I will give you a little hint and it's to do with um, um, waterfalls. Um, so yeah, just have that in your mind. And uh, the third segment of the presentation will be on that. The first bit is me and I will talk to you about, just give you a little bit of an update on uh, key selling points and ideas with regards to Tobago in general. So without further ado, you need to give me a few seconds while I do my share screen. It always fails the first time round, So um, be prepared for me to go, oh, no, I'm going to try again. And I need to make sure optimize. Is it optimized for video clip or, or share sound? Which one is it, Sarah? Share sound. Okay. If you've got so video one, with sound on. One works better than t'other. Um, and that presentation is not coming up. Okay, please bear with me, ladies and gentle people. Zoom. Okay. Share screen. And can you all see the screen? Yes? Yeah. Okay, let me start the present. Oh, lots of thumbs up. Brilliant. Excellent. So Thank you very much again, Dwayne and myself, Stephen. Um, we are going to be your, your Tobago hosts. And I just, uh, before I get into the nitty gritty and talk you around the island, um, the first thing I do, I always do, is get people into the mood. Um, and in doing so, we just show you a quick 30 minute, I'm joking, it's only a three minute video, <laughs> uh, introducing our beautiful island. So sit back, relax, and welcome to Tobago. It's only when I go abroad and I see what is out there and I come back and I measure against what is here, there is no comparison to beauty. Some writings of our history, it is said that Christopher Columbus called it Bella Fauna, meaning beautifully formed. Natural, beautiful, peaceful. <laughs> yes, I get emotional. That's why I'm here. <laughs> One of the fascinating things about nature, there is always something new, and especially in the tropics where there's such wide diversity persons can experience and have the awe associated with some of the beaches we have, aquatic life we have, some of the fascinating birds we have within a day, within a short period of time. You have the Caribbean Sea on one side, you have the Atlantic Ocean on the other side. On our doorstep, a fringe reef that wraps around the entire area. You have this huge amount of biodiversity and uh, you know liveliness of the entire water that surrounds the island. We also do bioluminescent nighttime tours, which are like uh, an escape into the deep, dark secrets of this you know glowing phenomenon. It's like this almost cosmic effect. It's just something to be seen. I know everybody in the village, <laughs> and everybody know me. That is the nice thing about here. Tobago 
as used to the extended family. There was always a grandmother, aunt, or uncle. There was always love. We eat and we drink, we laugh, and everything together. Tobago, in one word to me, beautiful. Beautiful place to live. It gives me great pleasure to be in Tobago and do what I do. The sunsets here are hardly bar none, some of the nicest I've seen. I would describe Tobago as one of the clean, serene, and the best place that anyone could come. Be easy, be happy, and have a good time. There is nothing to compare to. This little dot called Tobago exists, and come visit. And that is that. Thank you very much. Um, I understand that some of the, the video might have been jittery for some people. If it is, and you didn't quite see that whole, have that whole experience, I do have a link which I will share, um, or I'll, get, I'll share it with Sarah to share with you guys. Um, it's actually on YouTube, so you can actually see it yourself. Or, or if you actually want a hard copy of it, please let me know, and I'm more than happy to share a, a drop box link so you can download that video and use it um, on your own website if you wish obviously obviously promoting our beautiful island of Tobago so yes that hopefully will get you it gives you uh, gets you into the mood of uh, what Tobago is all about the vibe the feel the essence of our beautiful island um, and just to introduce the island now as I proceed um, we are positioned right at the very bottom of the crest of Caribbean islands so right down here where there's the rest of the Caribbean islands and there is the beautiful dual state of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, the Tibet, Trinidad at its closest point is approximately seven miles away from Venezuela. So there are a few influences between South America which affect both of our islands, but the focus on the presentation today is just on paradise, which we call Tobago. Getting there, now I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for all my American and Canadian friends. I do actually have a slide indicating all the different carriers coming down from the States and I have neglected, it's my mistake. I hold my hands up completely. I only discovered it like five minutes before the presentation. I put this one only in there, but there are a number of carriers um, bringing, um, offering, offering opportunities down directly to Tobago and via Port of Spain, um, which then links on with Caribbean Airlines, like a 20 minute hop over to Tobago. So getting to Tobago is relatively easily um, from um, the States and from Canada. But this slide obviously indicates um, that British Airways flies twice a week um, from London Gatwick. The service stops down or touches down in St. Lucia for about an hour or less. Um, and then it flies on to Tobago. And the other option from London Gatwick um, is uh, the British Airways service to Port of Spain three times a week. Um, and that's direct to Port of Spain. But then, of course, you do then have to connect onwards with Caribbean Airlines, which I said just a few minutes ago is a 20 minute hop. So getting to Tobago is very, very easy. But I apologize to my uh, North American friends. Um, I did neglect to put that correct slide in there, but there are options available. Now, one little thing I have been I have mentioned on, a, on, a, on my uh, last few presentations is the fact that our airport is being revamped. We are actually getting a brand new airport. Um, the new domestic terminal is done, uh, all the land side air, sorry, the air side um, elements are done with regards to the extension of the runway and various bits and pieces on the air side. Um, and in effect, what they are building now uh, is the new international uh, land side elements. So um, I haven't got a specific date because I think the original date was end of 2023 or even 2022. So this is Caribbean time. You must understand. I think all of you guys probably have been to the Caribbean, know the Caribbean. Things do take a little bit of time sometimes. But good news is we will be getting a brand new airport sooner rather than later. So that, that will be fantastic for your guests coming to our island. Now, the island itself, um, it's only 25 miles by seven at its widest point. Um, so getting from the airport down here in the southwest all the way up to um, Speyside up here in the northeast takes about an hour and a half. Um, so it's it's not that large. Um, it is easy to get around. Um, I just want to give you a, a slight introduction, a quick introduction to the geography of the island and various bits and pieces. So down in the southwest area, um, number one indicates an area called Crown Point. 
And our Crown Point is the area where you'll find most of the nightlife, particularly on a Friday and Saturday night. So if people want to, to boogie, they want to shake their, mm -hmm, then they need to be down there on a Friday and Saturday night. That's down in that area. Our number two, uh, Pigeon Point Heritage Park. Now, I know Dwayne is going to be talking a lot about that particular area, but this is the area where you, if you want to do your water sports, um, it's also the, the, the starting point to the bioluminescence in the Bonacord Lagoon, which obviously Dwayne will, will elaborate on. That all happens around Pigeon Point. It is a beautiful park area, um, and we, sh we will show you some images of that a little later on. Now, I recently returned from Tobago um, on a, a fam trip, which you're pretty much aware of, and we stayed in this area here, um, Great Corland Bay, near Plymouth. And along this stretch here, is where you will find lots of nesting turtles. Now, actually, you do actually find them along the whole of the coast, but this is very, very, it's easier to see them in this area because there are a lot of properties down in this area. We stayed in a property down there, and on the first night, we saw the magnificent leatherback turtle coming up to lay her eggs. We turned off the lights, we sat back, we listened, and we just watched for half an hour, 45 minutes, it came up, dug its nest, and started to lay its eggs. So, honestly, absolutely amazing, incredible, very, very beautiful and, and very memorable. If, you, if you're interested, you want to see these, this sort of experience, this is the sort of thing you can do. That sort of natural experience can be done, particularly in this area here where we have a number of properties. Now, as we journey further up the coast, you'll see places like Castara Bay, Englishman's Bay, Parle Tuvier Bay. Now, Castara and Parle Tuvier are villages. They are your authentic um, Caribbean, unspoilt, beautiful, pristine villages, practically the same as they were 20 to 30 years ago. So you will still see the fishermen pulling in their nets in the morning, still pulling the scene. And yes, as visitors, you can always join in and help them, which is a fantastic thing. And, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've done well, they, they might even give you a fish, a throw in a fish for your efforts. So yes, these, these are the sort of authentic, down-to-earth um, sort of experiences you can have when traveling particularly on this Northern Caribbean coast. Englishman's Bay is a deserted, gorgeous, pristine beach. Um, it's got one hut, which has a restaurant at the top, has a gift shop at the bottom, and that is it along this stretch of two, three mile beach. Absolutely pristine. Again, that's the sort of beauty that you're gonna get, particularly um, in, uh, uh, along this Northern Caribbean area. Um, along here, in this area here, there is a, a small village called Charlottesville, and they have a research element there, a research facility um, called ERIC, where they do um, coral replantation and preservation. Um, around this area here um, you, is an area, is a small village called Store Bay, uh, and this area is fantastic for people who want to go to Little Tobago for bird watching, and absolutely amazing tip-top scuba diving particularly around this area, all around that northern coast, but particularly in that area, some fantastic dive sites there, incredible, incredibly good coral systems. And then as we travel further along, um, you come to Roxborough, um, you've got the Argyle Falls, which is a beautiful three-tiered waterfall. Um, you've got the Tobago Cocoa Estate, where you can go and actually see um, and explore um, and find out about where we are, our sort of locally grown cocoa beans are. Um, it's a cocoa estate, obviously, so we grow the cocos there, there. The beans are then shipped over to Europe to actually make the chocolate, but really fascinating. You do get to taste a little bit of our, of our chocolate there. Um, and then if we just continue that journey around, we end up in Scarborough, which is the capital, um, which has a beautiful fort, Fort King George, and the museum, Tobago Museum, lovely restaurants to eat at, shopping, that sort of element there. So that that's a quick little journey around Tobago, um, giving you a little bit of a taster of, um, of some of the elements. The only other thing I'm going to point out before we move on to Dwayne's presentation is this circular area here. And as you can see, it's described as the UNESCO Man and Biosphere Program, or it's a Man and Biosphere designated area. And the three elements that are incorporated into the Man and Biosphere designation are the villages, so I've mentioned a few of the villages, Castara, Palais Tuvier, Charlottesville, Speyside, and that's to do with sustainability efforts within those particular villages. Um, the research, Eric research with regards to coral preservation and replanting efforts that they have there, and um, the emerald spine that Tobago has, which is the main ridge forest reserve, the oldest protected rainforest in the Western hemisphere, protected since 1776. 
So yes, those three elements go towards making, or go towards the sort of the designation of the UNESCO man and biosphere. So yes, that's, that's, that's sort of a quick synopsis of what this area means and what that circle means. And of course, a quick journey around our beautiful island. So yes, if you have any questions about that or want any more information about anything I've just mentioned, please um, drop, a, drop a question in the chat. Um, and as a follow-up, um, you can always, always follow up with a, an email or question afterwards. So now, without further ado, I would like to introduce or bring back in Dwayne, who will talk to you about some of the wonderful elements that he has to offer um, in Tobago. Over to you, Dwayne. Thanks, Stephen. Um... Hi everyone, uh, I'm just going to go through some of the cool adventures that we can do here in Tobago in the water. Some of them have a little bit of a land component, but uh, our primary focus is to enjoy the oceans uh, and water courses of Tobago. Um, just to clarify, and one thing Stephen mentioned on a map, which would go a little bit into snorkeling, he mentioned Storbe up in the uh, northeast, but it's actually called Speyside which is the dive capital of Tobago. So lots of scuba diving up there. Store Bay is also a good snorkeling area and used for beginner diving, uh, but that's on the Southwest. So two really cool areas, but different different things you can do in both. But um, over to, to welcome to stand up paddle Tobago and snorkel Tobago. So we're kind of like a, a paddle boarding, surfing, snorkeling, soft adventure, and a little bit of hard adventure business. Um, if you just look at that image that, uh, that came up there, that's Pigeon Point. You can see the famous Pigeon Point jetty in the background and, um, you know, pretty iconic image of, uh, uh, of, of, beach, of a beach in Tobago. And uh, that, that jetty is where the glass bottom boats will pick up uh, clients if they want to go out onto Buko Reef, uh, which is a Ramsat protected park in that area. Um, and one of the reasons we do paddle boarding there is because the reef tends to shelter Pigeon Point and the water is relatively calm most of the year, um, except during our winters when the surf comes up and then you have different areas that we do different things in. So the beautiful thing of Tobago is depending on when you come, there's conditions um, specific to different activities that make it great for that time of year. Um, so right now it's absolutely calm and uh, you can pretty much go anywhere on the sea um, and, uh, and it's not as busy. So yeah. Great, great stuff there. So if you click across there for me, Stephen. Go to your next slide. You can go, yeah, yeah Stephen, just click I'm over there. I'm clicking and it's just not, it's just not responding. Please bear ah, with it's me. it's frozen. Sorry, my, my bad. Well, I can talk no, forever. No, 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 you wouldn't know. <laughs> I've clicked about and, and five that, times and it's chosen not to move on. It likes this picture. Give Bear with me, please. All right. So while Stephen is doing that, I'm going to just go through one or two other things you'll see there. Um, at Paddleboard Tobago, at Santa Paddle Tobago, we're really focused on carbon neutrality. Um, um, almost all of our tours have no, no carbon footprint on it, other than obviously a kayak is made of plastic. So obviously it was made then, but our kayaks can last us up to 20 years. So... So our actual tours, we have no fuel component of it. And it means that we can really focus on the green side of, uh, of the business and, and make sure that we're not impacting the environment in any way, while also educating people to the, the, the amazing things that we can do without, without, without any carbon footprint. Um, so Stephen will bring back up that slide when it does shortly. But the first, the first of things that we offer our paddleboarding lessons. Now we do it from the beautiful uh, Pigeon Point um, picture, which you just saw there. Um, and we also do them in another lagoon on the Atlantic side called Pity True Lagoon. All right, now Stephen's coming up here. So let's see if he gets it up there. Um, click over to that bottom slide. See if he comes up. There you go. Right. So as you can see, actually, this, this actual slide is from a lesson, which I did literally a week ago. So you can see how calm the water is. It's crystal clear. And the depth of the water is about four feet where they are. So you're pretty much standing when you fall off. Pigeon Point is to the left. And you can't see it, but where those clouds are off in the distance, that's actually Trinidad. You could just make out the horizon there. 
So we're very close to Trinidad, but a beautiful area to learn to paddleboard. And then when it gets a little bit rougher here, we go to Pitichu Lagoon, which is on the Atlantic coast in Tobago Plantations, which is a uh, host of one of our uh, PGA golf courses. And in that lagoon, it's absolutely sheltered. And again, a great place to learn to paddleboard. And uh, we take people from uh, any age, from kids right on up to grandparents on a paddleboarding lesson, and turn, teaching them how to, to stand up on boards and paddle. And then when we're done, depending on their energy levels, if they're feeling more adventurous, we'll continue along that coastline. So where the gentleman is with the red shirt and there's a glass bottom boat behind there just parked, we'll go along the coast and have a paddleboard uh, along pretty much an un... There's nothing on that beach other than coconut trees and uh, sand and, um, and probably six inches of water will be passing. And you'd see things like pelicans and um, juvenile stingrays, uh, an assortment of fish, all kinds of cool things. If we're lucky and we start really early, we'll get green turtles. Uh, Stephen had mentioned leatherback turtles in Tobago, which are laying right now. But we have five of the seven saltwater turtles in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and in this area, we get lots of green and hawksbill. And they're there all year round, uh, as opposed to leatherbacks, which lay primarily from March through July, August, um, when we get the biggest turtles in the world laying on our beaches but uh but yeah great location for paddleboard lessons so uh steve if you could just jump to the next slide um, um maybe it's stuck again <laughs> Wait, it's on island time oh, it's gonna be one of these presentations it's stuck the again. powerpoint uh, they had a little rum punch last night and you know how it goes me, you know, it slows let me down try not to just do this on a okay bear with me once again please ladies and gentlemen yeah so when um when Stephen jumps from one to the other, then after the, the next um, lesson that we offer, activity offer is surfing. Now surfing is popular all over the world and uh, we teach surfing all year round. Where we go depends on the day. Uh, Tobago's Caribbean coast, which is what you're seeing on that last image in Pigeon Point is absolutely calm during our summer months. So from May through um october november it's like that and it can be like that all year round but we tend to get our northern swells in our winter months so again late october november through april um we tend to get surf as in all the caribbean islands do um but not consistent like the pacific off and on and when those things happen we get we can offer surfing lessons as you can see there we can offer surfing lessons in different uh locations in tobago um, in fact, those images kind of give a, uh, the reason they're there is because they're actually all in different spots. Um, the first one on the left, look how clear that water is. That actually is the Atlantic side and it is right next to uh, Scarborough, which is the capital. And in fact, the, one of the oldest hotels in Tobago right on that corner uh, where, where you see the, the palm trees in the background. And um, that, that is called Small Backlet Beach. And then the one with the rainbow, which was a real luck shot, um, which happened a few months ago, that is on the way to Pigeon Point. So it looks flat calm because that's where the image and the uh, rainbow was. But you get really nice waves coming in there for learning uh, again during our winter months. Um, the, the, the image on the left is actually during the summer months. So we'll have surf in the summer and this is in our winter. And then our far right image, um, where you see a, a person surfing there, that is Mount Irvin, which um, one of our best kept secrets in Tobago that we don't really like to talk about publicly, but I'm going to anyway. Um, it's pretty much one of the best waves on earth during our winter months. Uh, it's a right hand point break for those who are surfers. And um, you can see the headland of Back Bay uh, in that image. And, um, and pretty much you have some of the best waves on earth uh, breaking over a reef during our winter months. Um, again, October through April. I do take beginners there if it's not a big day, but it can get big like Hawaii and I've surfed waves up to 30 feet there. So you have quite a gamut of options for, well, this, these are surfing lessons, but you can also do uh, stand up paddle surfing lessons. And because we have many, many locations, um, we can get away from the crowds. One of the best things about Tobago is it's not 
um, a high volume business island. So um, as you can see from every shot there, there's no one else out surfing with us. So we tend to be able to do our activities with just the group that we have, the group being one person or, or five people. You know, we, we tend to be more small, intimate, away from crowds, and that's really our intention. So if we know Mount Irvin on the far right is very busy, we go to another spot which will have no one on it and find a location where the customer can have a, a great time. Steve, let's see if third's a charm and jump to the next slide. <laughs> see what next adventure we have in store. Um, so while while Stephen is doing that, those are those are some of the lesson based uh, things that we do. Um, I'll, I'll add one as he's switching across to my brother's business, which is Radical Sports Tobago, which also teaches uh, kite surfing, wind surfing, and foil surfing. Foil surfing is one of the more popular ones. Um, and all done from Pigeon Point. It's an IKEA certified shop on Pigeon Point. So we have the wind and the, the sea-based activities kind of covered. All right, so on to our most popular tour, which is our bioluminescent tours. So back in 2012, my brother and I had a friend in the Bahamas who had a, a kite surfing shop who had, uh, who had been doing bio tours and just in a random conversation asked if we had we growing up in Tobago had seen bioluminescence, but it tended to be more of a random thing in an odd place and didn't have any consistency. So doing a little research, we we figured we had locations for it, one specific one that we tend to have, we had we'd actually grown up around but never came out at night. And uh we went exploring from Pigeon Point and realized it was well, it was spectacular that night. And after doing it repeatedly, realized that we had one of the most incredible bio bays on earth right here in Tobago and no one had known. Uh, so uh, late 2012, we started doing bioluminescent tours initially primarily on, um, on paddle boards because that was the new cool then. And, uh, and then over time, I've transitioned more into kayaking uh, for these types of tours due to the length of the tour. Although you can paddleboard, but we only recommend for advanced fit people due to the length of the tour. And how this tour works is we kind of, we paddle from Pigeon Point in the early evening. So right now we'd be at 6.30. Well, it's still light, but it's starting to get dark. And we paddle to No Man's Land, which is a beach across from Pigeon Point, about a 25 minute uh, kayak. And then we'll meet at that beach and wait for it to get properly dark so that we can enter Bonacord Lagoon, where we have uh, bioluminescing plankton. Um, for those who don't know, plankton are really, really small creatures that glow when pushed. Um, in Stephen's video, you actually had National Geographic shooting it with us and um, their cameras, which you need to mortgage your house for to, um, to take the plankton. You can see how bright it is. Below, that's my really crappy iPhone 13, which got a bit of image uh, in the bottom there. Um, it's a surreal, almost um, unbelievable glow that's made when you push the water. Um, and we actually get into the water and move our hands through the water. And it's almost like, like the Avatar movie or um, your whole body is making a snow angel in the water. Stephen got very lucky this last uh, moon cycle tour, well, last uh, bio cycle that we did, um, the plankton was pretty spectacular um and uh and yeah it was i don't know it's one of those experiences that you'll do in your life and you'll never ever forget it um so anyway we we enter the lagoon with the kayaks we paddle in there we'll actually get out of the kayaks if you're up for swimming at night in the dark with a life jacket on and uh and actually interact with plankton and if not splash it in your lap and, and move it around and it is really it's it's the most surreal thing you've ever had uh, experience because you're making it glow. And after we're done interacting with the plankton, we'll then um, continue around the lagoon and see other creatures that we get at night. Um, in that top left image, I'm actually in the water um, showing off a sea cucumber uh, and letting people interact with it. Um, and then we'll have... Well, again, nature is luck of the draw. Sometimes we get rays and we'll get uh, sea urchins and turtles and all kinds of fun things. 
um, on that tour. We almost like to call it our night safari now. And we can have uh, families, kids of all ages. You notice in that double kayak, there's two people on the one on the left and there's a kid in between. Um, so we'll have lots of, uh, lots of different ages on that tour. And then, uh, and yeah, and then we paddle back to Pigeon Point. And as you can see, uh, this is our after photo uh, of the tour. We, we tend not to do photos on the tour itself. One, because, um, I mean, you can do photos of each other as in selfies for your Insta feed and whatnot. Uh, but Plankton, you really need high-end cameras to get good quality stuff. Well, at least till Apple's next update or Samsung's next update. Um, to, to get good qualities of the of the plankton. Also, we want it to be dark. We only do our tour two weeks per month based on the moon cycle. So the moon, actually our, our tours start back tonight. Um, so the moon is like a huge flashlight that overpowers the glow. So we tend to do it when the moon is not present. Um, so even though it is actually full moon right now, the moon would rise uh, from nine o'clock and we're already on our way home by the time the moon comes in. So. So very, very popular tour. We've won um, Best Tour in the Caribbean multiple times. And uh, TripAdvisor has pretty much given us um, their customer service award every year since we've been doing this tour. Well, since we've been running the business because this bio tour. And uh, we share this with my brother's business, Radical Sports. So we do it together. So yeah, very popular tour. And um, if you're in Tobago, it's pretty much one of those must-dos uh, if you want to do an, an outdoor adventure. Again, there's a little bit of physicality in that you will be paddling, but it's a double kayak. So you have you and your friend, or you can make your husband do all the work or, or, or vice versa, right? But uh, but really, really awesome to a great, a great activity to do at night. And it gives you another activity than the usual rum punch cocktails and steel pan in the evening. So it's nice to change it up a bit. All right, Stephen, over to the next one. All right, so this is our uh, another very popular tour that uh, launched about four or five years ago. So it, again, one I I like I'm kind of a 24 hour person because we do things at night and we also do them at six in the morning. So um, pretty much one morning in my usual activities is getting out and paddleboarding and surfing and doing fun things. I noticed that there was an area between the nylon pool and uh, Pigeon Point where green and hawksbill turtles love to lime is the word we use in Trinidad and Tobago for uh, being social and hanging out. We're liming. I mean, I'm making a presentation, but after we'll chat and we'll consider that liming. If you go to a mall in Trinidad and Tobago, it'll say no loitering or liming, only buying, right? So um, me, I, I noticed that there are turtles liming there in the mornings. So what I ended up doing as a, a tour, and it's become very popular, is we do kind of a similar route to the bioluminescent tour in that we start on Pigeon Point bright and early. We meet at 6 and probably leave by about 6.30. And we paddle to No Man's Land. Um, and then we paddle to the Nylon Pool, which is this area on the left, which is a, um, a shallow area. Where all the sand collects in the middle of Boko Reef. Now, again, I do have a cycle when I like to do this tour. I try to line it up with the lowest tide. So as you can see, the paddle boards in the shot, they're in pretty much about four inches of water there. You can almost not paddle there. It's so shallow. The fins are literally pushing the back of the boards out. Um, and uh, again, most people do this in kayaking, uh, but it's better in paddle boarding because when we are looking at things in the water, we're standing. So it allows us to see much farther out. Um, but again, it can work both ways. So we, we paddle, we, we take a lovely paddle over to no man's. And the reason we do it also early is there's no wind at that time. So you can see how still the water is. So it's a much easier paddle. And then we paddle from no man's land, which is, if you look at the paddle boards, it's that beach to the left. And we paddle up across to, to the nylon pool, which is lovely at that time in the morning. Cause no one's there. It's just us. <laughs> which is beautiful in itself. So we're in this amazing area in the lowest tide. It's like we're walking on water in the middle of the ocean. And, and in terms of nature that we get there in the mornings, that brown area is turtle grass uh, or um, the turtle grass is very, um, it, it's, it's used by conchs. So conchs will kind of grow up in that area uh, and hide in there. Uh, we'll get the odd small stingrays swimming around in, in that area. 
And then as we leave and go to our right, we'll run into lots of juvenile green and well, pretty much Hawksbill or turtles that hang on that in that same kind of zone. And then we'll downwind because at this point, the wind's up on us. We'll downwind back to Pigeon Point, which is pretty much behind where those people are standing on the left. And we'll hit that area that pretty much has, I would say, anywhere from 50 to 100 turtles that will pop up. And I, my philosophy or, or thought process is it's been dark all night. The sea has cooled down. And now they want to get a little sun on their backs. So they'll come up and just chill on the top of the water and take some air and relax until we kind of sneak up on them and then they dive. Um, so they're pretty much coming up, taking a breath in and going on. So we'll get turtles popping up randomly all around us. We're not actually snorkeling with them, but we're in their area that they're hanging out in. And they're pretty much there every single time I go. Um, the sunnier and lower the tide, the better it is. And uh, and yeah, it's it's just a really fun thing to do early in the morning to start your day off on the right foot. So yeah, very popular new tour that we've been doing. Um, and again, you don't have to paddleboard, you can kayak. Um, and we just take our time and we set our own uh, speed. So really fun tour. And, it, and again, no one else does this. So it's just us. All right, uh, Stephen, if you could cross over again. to the next slide, see what other one I had after that one. All right, so this one is for the more adventurous. <laughs> this is our full day adventure tour. And uh, we don't do this one with kayaks because kayaks are just too big and unwieldy, although you can sit on a paddleboard and paddle it. And again, we tend to do these as a much smaller groups. Um, we've done them as much as six people, but we tend to do two and fours. So what this tour is, and this tour tends to change based on the day and the ability level. We put paddleboards on top of our, our pickup truck. We pick up the clients at their respective hotel. And then we drive out to different spots on the island to see places that one, not many people get to see because they're off the beaten path and they don't tend to have car access. You would need boat or boat and foot access to get to. Um, there are not in this picture, but there are a few one or two hidden little rivers where we can squeeze off a half hour paddle under like bamboo cathedrals in absolutely still water, which is what we tend to do when we have um, beginner paddle borders on this tour. We almost throw in a little lesson while we're doing this tour. And then we have um, great locations. Like if you look at that waterfall on the far left, that is on the Caribbean side in a place called um, Bloody Bay. And there's a little hidden beach off to the left um, that has a, a river walk, probably a 10 minute river walk up to a secret waterfall, which you can see this couple swimming in. Um, so that, that part wouldn't be paddle boarding. We're actually walking and swimming. Uh, again, no, no one really goes there. So a pretty secret hidden waterfall. Then over to your middle image, our more popular locations for these tours is up in Charleville, which Stephen talked about up at the northern end of Tobago. And that is an image of Lover's Bay, which you can just make out where the waves are breaking, that it's got pink sand, um, which is caused from that coral that gets eroded by natural wave actions. So it's a very small beach with pink sand, but pretty much the paddleboard is on the left of the image. And then just to the right is a small island and there's a V-shaped reef that comes off of it. So we'll paddleboard there and actually do a snorkel along that reef. Um, then we can paddleboard further behind that image. I mean, I'd have to have so many images to show you guys, but there's another hidden waterfall, 20 minutes paddleboard from there. Um, which you again, hike up a little uh, river area to another waterfall that I've never been at that waterfall with anybody else other than us. Um, and then we also go just before this beach to the right is another beach, which is probably one of my favorite snorkeling beaches. It's called Pirates Bay, where we have two snorkeling spots there that we would paddleboard to that area and then snorkel. And we would, all our snorkels are guided snorkels. So we don't just say, hey, this is, this is where you snorkel. We actually go in the water with you and guide you kind of following me as the guide. I'll be pointing out cool things uh, that we'll see plus taking underwater uh, pictures of the what we'll be seeing. In terms of things that we can see there, uh, I don't like to specify. It's not like bio tour, which I pretty much can guarantee bio. But this, you're going to leave it up. You're going to get an assortment of great 
amazing uh, reef fish, but you're going to get turtles and rays. And a lot of this actually goes into stuff that we do on more targeted, just snorkeling tours. But in our adventure tour, we throw all of those things into like a six, seven hour day of just nonstop action <laughs> and fun. And we barely even have a chance. We don't even stop for lunch on this one. We're just snacking and eating nuts and bananas and just going. Uh, but again, we cater the tours to the clients. So if the clients look for something a little bit more relaxing, we would cater based off of that. All right, Stephen, on to the, the next slide, because I know I'll probably be going way too long at this point. <laughs> All right, so snorkeling tours. So Tobago as a snorkeling destination, man, there's there's so many snorkeling spots in Tobago. Um, and yes, there are a lot of um, operators, boat operators that offer snorkeling tours to the usual areas. But Tobago is blessed in the sense that um, pretty much surrounding the, the whole Caribbean side are fringing reefs meaning that they break right off of the beach. Well, I should say they start right off of the beach with the exception of Buku Reef and Pigeon Point, which because the reef is outside, there's just sand inside of there. But on the reef, they have snorkeling outside that the boats tend to do, which gives you an option for um, rainy days. So when you have rain, it tends to have a lot of runoff from the land. So your fringing reefs tend to get cloudy water, not good for snorkeling. But Buku Reef, because it's offshore, along with Speyside, which is one of the few places on the Atlantic side, um, because they're offshore reefs, then rain doesn't affect the visibility as much. Um, so you have those offshore locations. But then again, there are tons of snorkeling areas. In fact, most of Tobago snorkeling, you could literally walk on the beach and go right offshore. And uh, both the right, especially the right side, but the left side of that beach would have a sheltered snorkeling area. Um, and this goes from Storbay, your first beach, right next to the airport, all the way up to Charlotteville. Um, and they are countless secret non, um, secret snorkeling spots. And that's what I focus on primarily when I do snorkeling, is I focus on the, the lesser um, visited snorkeling spots. But also the more popular ones, um, reefs are kind of like cities where some areas are really, really nice. And, and, and those are the places to visit unless you, and, and unless you knew that you would miss that, you would probably just end up in a random park. Uh, whereas the, the secret park is the one you want where all the cool stuff hang out. And uh, the biodiversity on the reef is spectacular. Um, and you're gonna get all kinds of great things from eels to turtles, as you can see in that image, this was in Pirates Bay. And uh, that scrawled filefish right there is in Mount Irvin. Um, and I believe the one on the left is Arnus Vale, uh, where you see the, the people swimming. Um, visibility obviously depends on the day and, um, and things you'll see. You're always going to see an amazing assortment of fish. And another unique thing of snorkeling in Tobago is it's not how you'd imagine the barrier reef to be, where it's this flat area with coral that goes on for miles and miles. Tobago's underwater terrain is varied, very, very different. It, you'll, you'll hit a flat area and then 20 feet to your right, you're gonna have a huge rock outcropping and coral will grow on that. Um, and then, you know, marine life will be there and it's always changing and very unique. Nothing is the same. Um, it's not copy paste like other locations that I've snorkeled. It tends to be just all over the place, making it for very fun and entertaining and, and very different. And, and again, uncrowded. Um, pretty much never have people with me. Um, in one of my more advanced snorkels, which is where that surf, surf uh, image was that I talked about with Mount Irvin, Back Bay, which is the beach on the other side of that, I uh, we did a bio blitz in Tobago where we have 24 hours to identify as many species as we can. And I did that peninsula. And then for the first half of that day, and then the second half, I actually snorkeled from Back Bay to Mount Irvin, which is one of my favorite spots more advanced because it's a little bit more exposed. So we tend to do that one more summertime, but in the, the space of two and a half hours, I identified pretty much 95 different species in that one little snorkel. Um, uh, the largest and most interesting was a huge five foot tarpon, probably about 40 pounds, come and hang out with me for five minutes, just, just out of the blue. So pretty, pretty cool. Um, 
So lots of snorkeling options, and you can do some of them on your own. Uh, I've written articles on that, and then others you have to kind of know where to go, just you know, with a with a good guide. All right, Stephen, clip over. Okay, so coastal and lagoon tours. So these are less um, full day tours, but they give you um, shorter um, jaunts and glimpse into uh, into some of the the nice spaces that we can visit. So I, I mentioned on the paddleboarding lesson that we could then do a coastal tour um, if you are feeling up for it after a lesson. And this is this image is actually where we would go. Um, they're pretty much in this, although you can't really tell so well, but they're in like about eight, eight inches of water here. So it's very shallow. And this is further down Pigeon Point going towards Storby and the airport is actually, planes would be landing right in the background there. And we would do, I tend to love to do this one early in the morning or late in the afternoon, but we would paddle along Pigeon Point along this coastline through a fishing depot area that's covered with Southern Gray Stingrays. Um, they're pretty much there every day because that's where their free buffet line of food is. When the fishermen come back from fishing every day, they'd cut up the ends of the fish and, and throw the leftovers in the water and the stingray would come in and get their, um, their free buffet every day. So they're very well fed and they tend to hang out in that area every, uh, well, constantly. If you went to Castara, which is a very popular village in the middle of the island, the rays have become so accustomed to uh, tourists in the water that they're pretty much there every day as a family, regardless of the uh, the free buffet line from the fishermen. And um, you can snorkel with them. Those ones actually get comfortable and will hang out with you uh, every single day. And you don't need a guide for that. You just walk straight into the water and they're there. Um, but any fishing depot on the island, if you were to stop your car around three or four o'clock in the afternoon, when the fishermen would normally come in, they're going to be raised six inches to a foot off the shore just hanging out in that area and they're huge they're i mean in charlottesville i've seen them as big as five or six feet wide per ray just a regular southern gray um and then we do lagoon tours also which again goes into that same area we talked about um in tobago plantations where the other golf course is so we have two lagoons the one that we do the bioluminescence in and there's another one there on the atlantic side that we have um it's great for paddleboarding lessons, but also has a ton of nature because lagoons tend to have mangrove growing around it, which is a nursery for a lot of creatures. So we'll get pelicans and frigate birds and um, anhingas, which are those snake birds that dive into the water and swim under. Almost look like the Loch Ness monster image from far away. It has this head that comes up. It looks like a snake. They also call it a snake bird. And they swim, catch food and come out. Uh, so you'll have those in there. You'll have ospreys, which are hawks. Um, again, tons of turtles and uh and the odd ray here and there which is a lovely beautiful area surrounded by red mangrove and um no one uses except us <laughs> for some reason uh and um yeah so lots of great locations for um paddle boarding and 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 uh, kayaking all right steven next one all right so that kind of sums up what we do at paddle boarding in terms of snorkel tobago i kind of went through it we're pretty much offering guided tours we have like three hour tours and then um full day tours we tend to, not to use a boat for those tours because we don't need it we can drive out to the beaches that we want and offer that same boat experience but without the boat but just straight into the water um and uh, we don't have to put a lot of gas into the water and try and minimize our impact on that environment and Charleville will we'll use a taxi boat with will support the local villagers to take us out to Pirates Bay and Lovers Bay and then leave us there while we do our snorkel. Um, so yeah, so those are pretty much the main ones that we'll do there. Now we have one or two kind of tours that we hope to launch in the future. Um, we have a bioluminescing snorkeling tour, which is another one. Um, but our bio tours have been so popular, it's hard to fit them all in at uh, at the same time, you know. Uh, but in the in a notice of uh, in the need of time, <laughs> I'll jump over to uh, Stephen's uh, other part of that you wanted me to talk about with the waterfalls. So if you uh, scroll over to the next slide, I'll start going through waterfalls. Oh, no, this is my video. First? All right. Well, let's show this cool video. I forgot about this. So this is the adventure tour and you can see some of the things that we do on the All right, so I'll I'll just walk it through. So this is um, 
This is Richmond River, which is one of the rivers I talked about. You can see how flat calm it is. And this is the Bamboo Cathedral going over there. Um, you just have to press, there you go, play. So this is in that river. Again, there's no one in there. We're just having a little fun going under the bamboo. And it's totally sheltered from the sea. This is all on the Atlantic side. This is Bloody Bay, which is back on the Caribbean side. A nice calm day to this little secret beach where we would have our little river walk. Um, as you can see up here. And we're in total tropical rainforest. And at the end of this little river walk, we'll end up with this stunning waterfall here, which is a nice way to cool off after the salt. So you get a little fresh water bath after the, uh, the salt water. And um, just a stunning little secret area. Then over to Charlottesville and Lover's Bay. Now, we got real lucky on this tour, and I'll show you why. Um, but this is Lover's Bay here, which is a very small beach, and we're doing a snorkel straight after that. These are Those are orange-banded parrots flying there, which we get in the afternoon. And then this was the real luck of that tour. We ran into a pod of dolphins that just kind of hung out with us. And obviously, we were, we were hanging out and having way too much fun. And this, this <laughs> fisherman came and was like, whoa, look at the dolphins. And uh, they hung out with us for a good solid five, 10 minutes. I've had it happen maybe four or five times on a paddleboarding tour, but totally luck of the draw. Um, these are the southern gray stingrays I was talking about that hang out just off the beach. Uh, this one, these are in Charlottesville. And you'll get them pretty much every bay with, with, uh, with a fishing depot. And you just the the um well that's that's Manawa Bay as you can see the the main beach, and then yeah this is uh, an example of what an adventure tour can be. I mean we we do many versions of this, but this was a pretty popular one. So yeah, that was uh that was that video there of our uh, of what an adventure tour looks like, and um and and yeah it's it's super fun but it is a physical day we we know i only pick up the clients around 10 and then we get back around between five and six um that same day all right and i think that was that for paddle boarding and those tours and then we're gonna go into waterfalls now oh, while geez, i have uh, to stop the presentation and start it again it's one of those yeah that's all right glitches. while steven is is bringing those up. I mean, so Tobago has loads of waterfalls and uh, our most famous one is Argyle Falls, which is probably the easiest one in the sense that you would just um, drive 45 minutes to Roxborough. There's a parking lot that's all labeled and then you pay to enter um, and that would come with a guide that would give you uh, information as you're going uh, up the waterfalls. Although you could just walk it on your own, but it's more fun with the guide because then you're learning about the history of the area uh and uh it's in a uh, cocoa estate and for those who are into chocolate trinidad and tobago's um a variety of cocoa is called trinitario and it is considered um probably the best in the world so it's in, in high demand and we don't have mass farming here so it's all small farms and there's uh the cocoa estates kind of went fallow when you know mass um mass farming happened in the last 100 years but then in the in the last 15 to 20 years small cocoa farms are being re-established and high-end chocolate is being made in both trinidad and tobago and roxborough is the hub of that um and that is where argyle falls is which is your main falls which is where stephen has the uh cursor there and that's your easiest one to get to and your biggest one and pretty much has water all year round but it, you can't even see it in this map, but if you just got like a regular um, traditional uh, map of Tobago and looked at every single blue line. So if you look up at Bloody Bay, you see that little river, every single blue line all over Tobago is a water course. And the, because the center of Tobago is the rainforest ridge and it has a hill, then water is coming off of an of a, of a elevated area towards the coast. And because of that, you have waterfalls everywhere um and most of them are are not let's say not labeled and and i i uh <laughs> enjoy hunting for these and finding new ones and, and and looking around there's always some secret i haven't found uh, even though i've been doing this my whole life um 
So if Steven, um, so, okay, Kastara waterfalls. So again, some of these are easy and some of them are hard to find. Kastara is relatively easy to find, but it's still considered off the beaten path because it's not labeled. Uh, well, I should say it doesn't have an active uh, business on top of it like Argyle, which, which is a government business running it. Kastara, which the village itself is, is a very popular village, um, used to be just for backpackers and then became... Um, very popular with with a few hotels there and now they have uh quite a bit of tourism in that village and they have this beautiful castar waterfall I, as you can see approximately 20 minutes walk but it's probably a little, even a little bit less than that um right in the village you just you're driving on the road and there's a, a football field for those in the states a soccer field and uh and you they just have a river that runs um right along that field towards a waterfall and it's got a lovely pool. And um, for those brave enough, you though I'm not I'm not officially recommending that you do it, although I've done it, is climb up the waterfall. There you go. Climb up the waterfall and jump into the pool. Um, and, uh, you know, it, again, you don't even need a guide for this. Once you know where the football field, you follow the river and you're there. And um, I've taken my infant child when she was six months old in my hands, barefoot, um, to grandparents well there'd be a few little rocks that'll help them over but it is a, a lovely little waterfall um and you could easily spend uh, a few hours there a fact a fun day is to go to castara hang out with your rays in the morning do a little snorkel on your own then you go to the waterfall get a fresh water bath wash it all off and then go up to castara treats and watch the sunset with a pina colada in your hand so that's your day right there and uh there's a lot of water involved and it finishes with the alcohol based water <laughs> Uh, so that's Kastara Waterfalls. Um, over to your next one there, Stephen. So, sorry to interrupt there. I, I'm doing that the next time. That sounds perfect. Absolutely perfect. I'm doing okay, that. Okay, that's all right. I can. I, I used to actually do adventure days where you do multiple things. I, I think Ins and Outs has an article I wrote on that one. But right, um, Pal Palatuvier is actually my aunt lives in that village so if you were to drive another um so this is going along the caribbean coast to pass costara and you drive i'd say another 20 minutes up the island you'd run into the very quiet village of palatuvier i'd say palatuvier would be closer to costara 50 years ago there isn't any big hotels in palatuvier there is pretty much better uh, like uh almost like airbnbs and the odd for villa I wouldn't call it a resort because there's no restaurant, but they'd have a few villas all centered around an area, which actually we'll talk about the next waterfall after that, that, that that's around. But Palatuvé, um, quiet little village with a lovely bar at the top left, a great place to watch a sunset. In fact, it's where I took uh, Google when they were doing their 360 mapping of Tobago so they could get a shot where I'd be having my cocktail with the uh, mango tree below and the parrots on top. It's there. Um, but same scenario as Kostar in terms of how to find this waterfall. You would just drive into the village. As you're driving in, um, there's a parking lot on the, ref, just on the right, just a grassy parking lot. And there's a river that runs along it. And even uh, less of a walk than the Kostar one, uh, Palatuvi waterfall. And you just walk right along the grass. As you can see on the bottom image, you see this river course and that, that uh, grass here on your right. And then it goes to this Palatuvia waterfall. Now, what this image doesn't show you, again, super lovely waterfall. But on the left, which I found the other uh, in this year in January with my daughter, there's a trail that goes off to the left. And on the top of this waterfall is, a, I'm guessing, is a, I don't know how old it is, but it would have been a, an area where, let's call it the colonial days or even current uh, um, water facility, government water facility, has a, a catchment area that they actually built like where it would have had a pond, but they actually concreted areas where they could collect it. Um, maybe they'd use it to block the water a hundred years ago where they needed it for agriculture. But there's a huge pool on top of there and there's levels of pools going up. Uh, so if you're feeling adventurous, you can go off to your left and uh, swim in that pool up there. And then that kind of cascades down into this pool and so on and so forth. And I mean, when you're doing these walks, there will be birds everywhere. And for those into birding, Trinidad and Tobago has more bird species per square mile than any other place on the planet. So if you're a bird, birder, um, there are 
there's an amazing assortment of birds that are happening all around in all of these water courses because that's where the um that's where you know there's water basically all right Stephen I know we're, we're tight on time go to the next one all right so this one they called mystique waterfall I like the name although I've never even known there was a name to this one um so this one actually is in Palatuve also um but it's really hard to find um the only reason I found it and I know about it is because I stayed in these uh little villas up up on the rain it's from Palatuvi up on a rainforest ridge and um I didn't know where you would start this waterfall but I did it from there and they have some trails now from the the villas the trail is probably 10 minutes but I guess if you started from the bottom of the village that's where the 45 minute is but I've again never ever seen anybody um up there and uh it's very lush as you can get from that right image and then it's this series of staggered waterfalls um actually there's a picture in uh when steven's um main presentation started that i i see that there's a piece of that waterfall in that graphic um but uh, yes very very beautiful waterfall hidden and um and just an example of all the amazing secret places that tobago there you go that has on offer you know so you can see how how it is how it kind of cascades down there and uh and yeah and i mean there's tons of these all over the island and you can you can access them different ways um you know i mentioned the paddle boarding with guides argyle they're guys they're two guides in tobago that do mountain biking tours and they actually have not to this one but they are to other waterfalls that they take you to so that if you like waterfalls uh uncrowded ones uh then there are many beautiful hidden ones oh look <laughs> ah, i sent these to Stephen to prove i'd been there and this was uh this was when i took my wife when i had hair on my head uh a few years back and uh exploring this waterfall for the first time um i believe i was going to propose <laughs> <laughs> so uh so yeah there you go um twin river falls so Twin River is another one. Uh, this one is on your, you access from your Atlantic side. And uh, this one, I actually did a wedding party for this one for my sister. We, um, we, you pretty much drive up to an area where you can park. And then the guide helped us walk along the river up to uh, Twin Rivers and um, much more of a hike, this one, uh, but very nice hike. Um, worth doing definitely worth doing and then you yeah lovely lovely you actually walk along the riverbed on this one and then you can see the the waterfall there um, and when you're walking through this one you're actually going through an estate at the start with lots of fruit bearing trees uh pomeracks and mangoes and uh, breadfruit and avocado so quite a lovely walk and again uh because it's not argyle you'll probably be walking there just with the guide which is what's lovely about twin river falls is there is there others oh there you go all right well so so guys yes yeah, so well, that's the, it the, yeah there are lots of uh lots of i mean i think the real thing to come away from this is that tobago is covered with secrets and i mean we're just there there's so many i could go on for hours and hours and hours because that's part of the fun but this is to give you a taste of uh what makes tobago unique as a as a destination um and and the experiences that you can have um Dwayne I'm, I'm so sorry thank you very very much we are over time <laughs> we are desperately over time um good. that has been absolutely fantastic I wanted to 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 speed you up late earlier on but it was just so fascinating um I was just sorry, mesmerized by some of the things <laughs> you were talking about um yes you know you know and and others know I've been to the island I don't know 20 30 times but you were still just I was still mesmerized by some of the things you were talking about the various areas for snorkeling etc but I do want to try and see if um, if Sarah can fit in a couple of questions before we sign off because we are way we are way over time now. So Sarah, sorry, um, if do you have any questions that you can quickly we can quickly whittle through, please? Yeah. Um, do Catherine's ask? Will there be a VIP service in and out of the airport? Can will there be a VIP first? service? I have no idea. Um, they are. They are. There is um, on the plans. There are plans for uh lounge vip lounge areas i don't know if they're going to provide a sort of a fast track 
VIP service through. I have no idea. That that will be something they decide. Okay. Could you find out and uh, cover it in your follow up or let us know? Um, once I have information on all the facilities that are available at the airport, that's when I will be able to. I mean, there's nothing I can find out now whether or not that that's, they have plans for that because they won't. They don't. I don't. They haven't shared that sort of stuff publicly. Okay. Um, it's Super. just the build plan that the president is in town. Um, where does the cruise ship dock? That do docks down in in uh, Spain in uh, uh, there I am again Scarborough. Um, Scarborough. Thank you. I'm getting my yeah. side Scarboroughs and. Uh, <laughs> my store bay is all mixed up now, Scarborough. The, the, the smaller cruises also dock up in Charlottesville. So you have right, two options. Okay. Uh, okay, there's Scarborough and there's Charlotte's one up here. Yeah. Super. What is the area where you can sample chocolate? Sorry? You can sample chocolate? Yes. Um, it will be the Tobago Cocoa Estate. I mean, generally speaking, the chocolate that they have should be and it has been available all over the island in various shops particularly down in the southwest area um if it's not available in the shops it should definitely be definitively wave, be available at the uh the tobago cocoa state i can give Brilliant. a good spot. i can give a, a quick spot just a quick jump in right down in your yeah. map if you look at backlet rockley bay little rockley bay there's a place there called tobago coco delight and it's a local retired gentleman who actually makes local chocolate there with our raw product so down in that area, he's open Monday through Friday, and it's spectacular. It's the best place to get chocolate if you just want to eat chocolate. If you want to go to the state and see how it's made, then you go to Roxburgh. But if you just want to buy, it's right there, and it's fantastic. And all he sells is chocolate. There you go. Super. That's going to be um, on my next is, itinerary farm trip. Exactly. <laughs> when is the turtle season? Is it all year round? Um, the leatherbacks are particularly specifically March through to about September, and that includes the six week cycle for the nest for the for the uh, babies to 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 hatch. Um, but the rest of the turtle breeds, they they're year round. They are literally year round. I think I think, Dwayne, you mentioned that. During your... Yep, they're year round. Yeah. OK, the other ones. super. Um, what would you say the top two resorts are um, and are there any all inclusive? Um, top two resorts is it's 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 difficult because it down it depends on what people want. There are different resorts. Uh, the largest we have is Magdalena, which is down there's two hundred rooms. That might not suit a lot of people. Um, we have gorgeous boutiquey little bed and breakfasts, which are two or three rooms, absolutely stunning. We've got uh, things like the treehouse type accommodation at Castara. We've got all inclusive resorts all along this resort, this uh, beach stretch area here, there's lots of little resorts. Um, there's really beautiful colonial style uh, Cocoa Reef down down in, in Crown Point. You know, we've got the gorgeous Blue Waters Inn up in uh, Speyside, I'll call it the right thing this time. Um, so do you know what I mean? What I can do, I can share a, a link with everyone on all the accommodation. I, I could never really say what the top two, because it really does depend on what the client wants and the, the type of client, couples, families, you know, single travelers, that sort of type of thing. Okay, super. Um, Debbie, um, she's managed to book clients to Tobago for March, um, seven nights at Castara, four nights own arrangement, they're going sailing and three nights blue water in, but she could only find one tour operator leaving from the UK. Are there many tour operators UK wise that you could tell her to look at for next year or for another time? Again, I can provide you a list. I can provide them with a list of uh, a variety of tour operators. Um, if any of them are signed up to my newsletter, I always have a, a list of tour operators on my newsletters that I send out. But there are a Great. number, and there aren't a number that specific, specific uh, that um, have uh, contract um, Castara retreats. Um, that one, there's only really one in the UK. That's uh, Carib Tours. Um, they are looking for a couple of more, but then, you know, the reality is it is only a 16 room property, um, but right. Blue Waters is, should be available with a lot of tour operators. And as you guys are travel agents, you can always, you know, direct, directly, um, package it if you can dynamically package because they're on all the booking engines as well. So. Brilliant. Um, uh, Carol's office. asked, do you have a video, do you, um, Dwayne, when the clients are on the tours, do you have a video, um, to provide for them that they can purchase like a memory or do not do that so i don't um i take photos and and sometimes video of every single tour with the exception of the bioluminescent tour because i haven't mortgaged my house yet for that camera um <laughs> but we we give it free as a promotional tool so we just ask we, we do that with every we clients uh so yeah we take pictures and videos of every single tour and uh and complimentary to the client um, in return for a review 
on TripAdvisor. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Carl has asked, when is the best time to see the plankton grow in the evening? Um, so two weeks on, two weeks off, based on the moon cycle, all year round. The rainier months are the better months, but pretty much it's good all year. Uh, the best thing to do is just send us an email. You know, if you really want to do it, send us an email before you book them. We can tell you 10 years out what the moon cycle is going to be. So that's that's how we do it. But it's moving every single month. It moves by a day. So it's always changing. Um, but it's your moon cycle. Brilliant. OK, we've got a few people that are asking for um, the links, the websites and everything that you've shared today, Stephen. Um, we've got Catherine that's asking, how can we get listed onto your newsletter? Um, and then Patricia wants a list of accommodations. So is there anywhere specific that they would go to to do that? Or again, could you do that in a separate follow up? Um, I could do it in a separate follow up. Um, you okay. know, Tobago Beyond website and there's a click at the top right hand side saying go stay. That is the link I was going to provide with regards to all the registered accommodation on the island. Um, what was the other thing you asked for? Yeah, so newsletter accommodation. Newsletter. Um, um, links. In effect, I can add all attendees to the newsletter list and you can unsubscribe if you wish. That that might be the easiest way, if unless anyone specifically yeah, doesn't want to be added the to the newsletter. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way. I mean, if you don't want to unsubscribe, yeah, that's probably yeah, easier. Okay, so super duper. We, um, we're at the time of the day now where, so Stephen's got a Tobago gift box as a prize. So every single person that's on, and I understand a few people have had to leave earlier, um, you will all still be entered into the prize draw. To get 10 entries, you're going to ask answer this question correctly. So Stephen, are you going to ask the question or is Dwayne? I hadn't even thought about it. Dwayne, I think Dwayne, as my guest, um, he can come up with a quick question on one of the things that he's mentioned and discussed um, today. Um, no pressure, Dwayne. Yeah, no pressure. Right. So what is the what is the beach called that has pink sand? Uh, great question. Mm -hmm. Great question. What is the beach called that has the pink sand? How do I say this? I'm seeing answers. Okay, if Ooh, it's called Lover's Bay, is that the correct answer, Dwayne? That is. Oh, so that would have been a good place for you to propose. Um, Jane was <laughs> the first person with the correct answer. Jane Walsh. Yeah. yeah. So you've been entered 10 times. So everybody else, as I say, will be entered in. Um, massive thank you to Dwayne and to Stephen. Um, when we send the follow up, Dwayne, is it OK if I provide your email address? Yeah. Super. So if you've got any further questions, reach out to him. Stephen's your fountain of knowledge as well for anything to do with Tobago and the hotels and uh, things. So drop him an email if you need him for anything. A big, big thank you to everybody. Sorry it's been a little bit late today, but I hope you've learned a lot. Keep logging your bookings and switch selling to Tobago. Thank, thank you thank guys you, very much. Thank you. Thanks, Cheers everybody. Again. Thanks, Dwayne. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.